Hello, welcome to this video. Today, we are going to show how Euler solved the Basel problem. How Euler showed that the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared is equal to pi squared over 6. He was actually the first one to derive this formula. Today we're going to show, I'm going to show exactly how he did it. So, we won't actually start with this sum over here. Instead, we are going to use the sine function. Well, the sine function, u, if you don't know, the Taylor series, I will have a video about that in the future, but the Taylor series expansion for sine x is x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial and so on. Minus x to the seventh over 7 factorial plus x to the ninth over 9 factorial and so on. And what Euler did was also derive an infinite product for sine x. Then take, then look at the x cubed term of uh, after taking out that product. And uh, well, those functions are the same sine x. So the x cubed part here, negative one over three factorial, will have to be the same there after taking out the product. So, let's derive the product formula. Well, we know that the function sine of x is wavy. If we draw it out like this, it will go like this. Sorry for my bad drawing. And the functions zeros, when the function is equal to zero, are at zero, pi, two pi, and also the negatives. Negative pi, negative two pi, sorry for that, and so on. And a way to write a function <coughs> is also uh, writing it as a product of x minus all of its zeros. So let me show you what I mean here. So all the, f the sine x zeros, all of its zeros, are multiples of pi. 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, also the negatives. Negative pi, negative 2 pi, negative 3 pi. So meaning that we can write sine x as a product of x minus each zero. So it's going to be x minus this zero, maybe the first zero, which is going to be x minus zero. Then the next zero of the function, say pi, so times x minus pi. Then the next zero we'll consider is negative pi. So it's going to be x minus minus pi which is x plus pi. And this pattern will continue forever. x minus 2 pi times x plus 2 pi times x minus 3 pi times x plus 3 pi, and so on. And this will obviously, but, hold on, sorry. That's not the complete way. Since multiplying it by any constant, We'll just stretch it, or, and we'll just stretch it, or and all that stuff, and it won't change its zeros. So this can be actually times any constant, which we'll call c. And now we want to find that c, and <coughs> plugging in maybe zero won't do the. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> well, plugging in zero won't do the trick. We'll have 
sine of 0 times is equal to c times 0, which is 0. Plugging in, in fact, any 0 of the function will not be good. So what should we plug in? Hmm. Well, we will, in fact, plug in x equals 0, but in a kind of unusual way. What we'll do is divide by this term, which is epsilon 0, which is x. So after dividing by x, we'll get that the sine of x over x is equal to c times the rest of the stuff. x minus pi times x plus pi. And you know the pattern, x minus 2 pi, x plus 2 pi so on forever. So, now, how can we still plug in zero? We're going to have a zero over zero here. Well, this is actually going to be the limit as x approaches zero. Let me write that down. The limit as x approaches zero of sine x over x and um, this is actually called the limit. You can't do a L'Hopital's rule since differentiating this is going to be cosine x but the proof that the derivative of sine x is cosine x requires this limit to know this limit. So we can't use L'Hopital's rule so it's going to be just in a loop. You can't do that. This is called the limit. It has a geometric proof, which I'll do in a future video, and it's actually equal to 1. So, plugging in here, x equals 0, we get this is going to be the, the limit, this one, so it's going to be 1, and then it's going to be c times, plugging in 0 into all of these, times negative pi is this, times pi, which is this, times negative 2 pi, which is, the, which is the next, times 2 pi, and so on. And, well, you can't say this goes to infinity or negative infinity, and dividing by that will mean that c equals 0, and you get the sine of is equal to 0. No. What we'll do is not say this is infinity, We'll just divide by all of this to get that c is equal to 1 over pi times negative 1 over pi times 1 over 2 pi. And you, and you know the pattern. Uh, you know the pattern, negative 1 over 2 pi, negative 1 over 3 pi, 1 over 3 pi, and so on. Instead of saying that this is equal to 0, we are just going to plug in C. And for each term, say the 1 over pi, we'll put in um, this one. Because, and the negative 1 over pi, put it in here. Because... That's going to allow us to show that sine x is an infinite product. So I'm just saying it's equal to zero. So, sine x is going to be, well, this part is x. And then times, plugging in negative 1 over pi in here, we get negative x over pi minus minus pi over pi, which is going to be 1 minus x over pi. Then the next one, plugging in here, 1 over pi, into this, we're going to get 1 plus x over pi. And the pattern will continue. 1 minus, sorry, <clears throat> 1 minus x over 2 pi, 1 plus x over 2 pi, 1 minus x over 3 pi, 1 plus x over 3 pi. This is going to go on forever. <clears throat> now, let me erase this. 
right? Let me erase this to so have more room. This. <coughs> now, we can multiply each two of these because of the difference of squares. This times this is going to be 1 minus x squared over pi squared. The next is going to be 1 minus x over the quantity 2 pi squared. And x squared over the quantity 2 pi squared and so on. So we can say that this is x times this times that, which is 1 minus x squared over pi squared. And the next one is 1 minus x squared over 2 pi quantity squared. And then so on, minus, minus x squared over the quantity 3 pi squared, 4 pi squared, and so on. Now, we fi we finally shown that this is equal to this product. Sine x equal to this product. And now we'll do what I said we'll do. Find what's the x cubed term of this. And it'll have to be equal to the x cubed term over here, because it's the same function, sine x, sine x. Same thing. So we can say that this will be, well, x, the only way we can have x is x times 1 times 1 times 1. Oh, like infinity, it's going to be just x. Then let me write that down, down here. So it's going to be x. But then the x cubed term. What are the ways you can get x cubed? Well, we can get rid of this x, we multiply by it itself, just x, just meaning out of this thing, uh, ignoring the x, we'll need to get out the x squared term. The only way we can have one, an x squared term is multiplying each one of x squared by uh, something by the rest of the ones. So, <coughs> it's going to be this one, this first x squared times the rest of the ones, so negative x squared over pi squared. Then the next is this times all the ones, so negative x squared over 2 pi squared. And it will continue, negative x squared over 3 pi squared, negative x squared over 4 pi squared, and so on. So the x cubed term is going to be plus x cubed times just uh, x squared. And just like we said, so in the negative x squared over pi squared, negative 1 over pi squared. Negative 1 over the quantity 2 pi squared, negative 1 over 2 pi squared. And so on, ne minus 1 over 3 pi squared, and so on to infinity. That's the x cubed term. Now, honestly, x to the 5th term is going to be multiplying two of these in every way possible, but I'm not <clears throat> going to do that. Euler did that, and I'll explain in the end of the video what he got by doing that. But then we'll have x to the 5th times a bunch of stuff, x to the 7th times a bunch of stuff, and just continue forever. But focus on this. We said that this is going to have to equal to the x cubed term here. So this and this are equal. So now, finally, negative 1 over 3 factorial, which is 6, is equal to, I'll factor a negative 1 over pi squared out of this. And what we'll have left is here 1, here. 1 over 2 squared, here, 1 over 3 squared, and so on, to infinity, the, the sum of the inverses of the squares. And then simple arithmetic, multiplying by negative pi squared on both sides, this will cancel, this will turn to pi squared over 6, and it's going to be equal to this sum. So 1 plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 
3 squared, so on to infinity, the sum of the inverses of the squares is equal to pi squared over 6. This is how Euler originally did it. And before I end the video, I actually want to say that Euler found the x to the 5 term, x to the 7th term, generally x to the anything term, and then set it equal to <clears throat> the coefficients of x to the something in here, and he found a formula for all of these when they're even. And this is actually called the zeta function. So 1 plus 1 over 2 to the p plus 1 over 3 to the p plus 1 over 4 to the p is zeta of p. And what Euler did was find a formula for zeta of p when p is an even natural number. I won't show the formula, I don't really remember. This is just zeta of 2, pi squared over 6. Finally, before I, again, before I end the video, subscribe to my channel if you want some more interesting stuff like this. And, as always, that's it.